everybody gets in. Perfect. Okay, so we're recording now. So Jessie is in the studio. She's going to be painting this adorable snow globe. I think everybody's, you know, in the mood for the holidays and Christmas just to bring some cheer. Um, yeah. All these classes can be found on michaels.com on their community classroom page after the fact. They've got a great library of this class, um, our Let's Paint, and a ton of other classes that you can watch all for free. So if you aren't able to paint along tonight, or um, if we're going too fast or too slow, you can always go back and watch these classes on demand. We try to keep a good pace for everybody since there are so many um, painting along with us live. You can watch that. All this product is available on michaels.com or in the store. So there's a lot of really great options that you can buy online or you can get the product delivered to you or pick up curbside. And Jesse's gonna teach you how to paint in just about an hour. If you have questions, let me know. I'll be in the chat and I can answer them or relay them to Jesse and she can try to answer them. But we're gonna get started because this one, um, we were saying this guy's gonna take a little bit but he's absolutely adorable and like the perfect way I feel like to kick off the season, so. Um, it's something we've never done before. We've never done a snow globe in these little snowmen, so I'm excited. Yeah. Okay, all cool. Right, it's, all, uh, it's all you. Awesome. Hey, guys. Um, like you said, my name is Jesse. Welcome if uh, it's your first time. Also, welcome back if it's not. Um, I'm going to go over, like here said, we're painting this cute snow globe tonight, um, which we can personalize at the end. I, I love paintings that you can personalize for your family um, or for a gift or anything like that, um, so that's really fun. Um, I'm going to let you know what supplies we'll need tonight. Um, so as usual, this is the canvas we usually use. Um, it's a 10 by 10 inch canvas. So any square canvas will work, even a rectangular canvas, whatever you've got at home. If you don't have this exact canvas, don't stress about it. You can really use any size canvas for this. You'll just have to um, sort of scale your painting um, based on what size your canvas you have. So we'll talk about that in a little bit too. I've also got my palette paper, my paper towels, my water basin for cleaning my brushes. Um, as far as brushes go, I have the seven piece craft smart um, variety set. So I use this one a lot. So if you're planning on joining us on Monday nights, I would recommend grabbing this pack of brushes from Michaels because I pretty much use this anytime I'm um, teaching this class. So it's got a lot of great um, variety, just like it's in the title. So we've got some big ones, some little ones. So um, go ahead and grab that pack of brushes. And I'll let you know as we go, which brush I'm using. Um, I also have a bowl here. so. In the um, event listing, in the um, supply list, I said a cereal bowl or some sort of bowl that you have at home. It's kind of based on what size canvas you have. So I've just got sort of a standard cereal or soup bowl here because I have a 10 by 10 canvas. So as you can see, we're going to be using this to trace our um, perfect circle for our snow globe. Um, but if you have a larger canvas, maybe grab a mixing bowl or a smaller canvas, maybe grab a mug or anything like that. Um, so you just want to make sure that it's sort of in proportion to your canvas. So you can see, hey, I've got Jesse, I'm going to interrupt you real quick. Um, I think I am spotlighted and you are not spotlighted. You're overhead. Oh, okay. And there, all um, I can see is me and you talking. Okay. Yay. I think that's it. Oh, yay. Okay, Everybody cool, see? Cool. Yay. So uh, I'm sorry, I'll Jesse. Really... No, that's okay. I'm glad that you spoke up. Um, okay. So just really quick. So you guys have a visual. Okay, I've got right. my 10 by 10 canvas. I've got my palette paper, paper towels, water basin, just for cleaning my brushes. I've got my seven piece variety brush set. Um, and this is the Craft Smart brand. And I got these at Michael's. Um, and then I was just saying, I have this just standard like cereal or soup bowl, like from your house. So as you can see, we're going to use this to trace our perfect snow globe shape. Um, but again, if you have a different size canvas, you might want a larger bowl or a smaller bowl. You can see how we have just a good amount of space around the side, just so we have a little bit of a background. Um, but again, you're gonna wanna select what bowl you have based on the size canvas you have. So, you know, you'll kind of center it. If you have like a tall canvas or a wider canvas, you just wanna have something that fits nicely in the center um, and have it centered on your canvas. So completely up to you, completely customizable. I also have um, a palette knife. So um, any sort of um, palette knife is fine. This is like a, a four inch long is what I think I put in the um, supply list. But if you don't have a palette knife, go ahead and grab like an old gift card. That'll work really well for what we're gonna be doing. So if you've got like, you know, an, an old Michael's gift card or from any store, an old, you know, Visa gift card, something like that, that's still in your wallet, go ahead and pull that out. Um, and you can use that instead. I've also got my painting toothbrush. So um, if you've got an old toothbrush, you can clean it and use it for painting. Um, or you can get them really inexpensive at the dollar store, of course. So um, this is my painting toothbrush. So grab one of those. Um, and then I also have a hair dryer. So again, that's just in case we need to dry anything between layers because 
again, like Kira said, we try to keep it at a good pace. There's always a ton of people painting. People paint at different speeds, um, but we do try our best to keep it within an hour because that's the slot we have with Michael. So um, we'll do some drying in between coats just so we can kind of keep it going so we don't have to wait. And then last but not least, we are going to be using our folk art acrylic paints, which um, these of course are the paints that we make. They're our favorite paints. Um, they're super thick and creamy. They're great for mixing. They come in hundreds of colors. So um, the colors we'll be using tonight are Cardinal Red. Um, and for this red, really any red is fine. So if you've got just like a, a standard red color, that's fine. That's whatever you've got at home will work. Don't stress about having the exact colors. We've got medium yellow. Again, just a regular sort of just sunny medium yellow color. We've got coffee bean, which is just your standard brown. It's like a chocolate brown. We have classic green, which is like just a leafy green color. So again, whatever you've got is fine. Wicker white, which is just white. We have teal, which is this pretty sort of aqua-ish um, teal sort of color. Um, you don't have this at home, you can mix um, green and blue to get a really similar color. So if you don't have this at home, don't stress. I've also got navy blue. Again, you know, just navy, just a dark blue. And then lastly, I have silver marlin. This is a really pretty, like sort of unique silvery color. Um, you can see we'll be using this for the bottom and for the base. It's, it's really pretty for winter. So I have, it's just sort of a pretty gray color. So if you don't have silver marlin at home, we can, when we get to it, we can, I can show you how to mix some blues and whites and blacks to get this color. So don't stress about that either. Okay, so that said, we are gonna start painting our background. So to do that, I'm gonna grab some of my teal and put it on my palette. And I'm also going to grab some of my wicker white. I'm gonna put that on my palette too. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick up my um, 3 fourths inch flat brush. So a one inch flat or a half inch flat is fine. Anything that looks kind of like this is, is perfectly fine. So I'm going to um, mix some teal and white, but I'm gonna use just a tiny bit of teal. We're gonna try to go for this light blue color. So I want mostly light with just a tiny bit of teal. So you can see, I don't have much teal on my brush. I'm gonna start mixing it into my white and sort of build that up because a little bit of teal will go a long way until I get the color that I'm looking for. You can see we're already really close to the color that we want. So I'm gonna make some more of it because we're gonna paint the whole background. So again, it's mostly white with just a touch of teal. We're going for this pretty like icy blue color. Okay, so I'm gonna let you guys go ahead and mix your paints. Again, we've got just a tiny bit of teal with mostly white. And we mix a good, we wanna mix a good bit because we're gonna cover the whole background. So I've got a good little puddle of paint here. And we have this nice light icy blue color. So once you do that, we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna start base coating. Nothing fancy here. We just want the canvas to be this blue color that we just mixed. So again, I just have my 3 fourths inch flat brush. Oops. And I'm just gonna cover the whole canvas with a nice even coat of this blue color that we just mixed. Whenever I'm base coating, I try to stay in one direction. It just helps with brush strokes. Um, if you don't go in one direction, that's fine too. Folk art um, paints are super rich and creamy. Um, they have a ton of pigments and they have great coverage. So as you can see here, like that's completely full coverage. We won't need to do two coats of this. Very rarely do I need to use two coats um, of folk art paint when I'm painting. I pretty much always can just get away with one coat. It just has such great coverage. So if you feel like your brush is starting to dry out a little, you can just dip it in a tiny bit of water. You don't want to put too much water on, but just if you feel like your brush is drying out on you because the paint is pretty thick, you just dip it in some water to keep it flowing. So I already ran out. I'm going to mix some more. And if the second time around, if you have to mix again, just like I'm doing here, and it's not the exact perfect um, color matched to the color that you mixed the first time, don't stress about it. You can see this background is sort of loose. We're going to put some um, texture on it later. We're going to put stripes on it. So if it's a slightly different color than it is at the bottom, you'll never see it. So don't stress about mixing the exact same color. Just try your best to get it as close as you can. So 
So everyone's saying they're not able to see the overhead again. So maybe we could unpin the overhead and repin it. Yeah. Do you think it's because we have it screened down? Usually screens up. I think that will affect it. I don't know. I've never had this issue, so I don't know. Yeah, John's looking at it here. Let me. Okay. So now to... people people said they can see. Oh, okay. okay. Okay, good. All right. Thank you guys. I just want to make sure it's hard. Yeah. I want everybody to be able to talk. I want to. <laughs> All right. The overhead is important. <laughs> yeah. Front yeah, nobody possible. needs to see my face watch you paint. <laughs> I neither. They just need to see the overhead. That's all that's important. Okay, good. Awesome. Yeah, just speak up, guys. We're we want to know if you guys are having an issue. So and any aqua, teal, light blue, any of those colors will work for this background. Absolutely. Even if you just have like a um just like a regular like a royal blue, if you just have like a regular like ultramarine blue at home, that's fine too. You could even put a if you have ultramarine blue at home, like just a regular blue, mix that with white and put a touch of yellow in and it'll make it sort of more of this aqua color. Oh, that's a just good idea. Yeah. Again, just a even base coat. Just wanna make sure I get full coverage, doesn't need to be perfect. Um, and now's a good time too, people always ask me if you wanna paint your sides now, you can feel free to do that. Um, I usually just do it afterwards, I wait till the end. Um, just because it gets messy and I usually just end up making a mess on my workspace whenever I try to paint my sides by like tilting my canvas around. Um, and also it just takes a while. I just like to kind of, you guys know me, I like to just continue my painting. I don't like to pause. So, um, so yeah, so paint your sides now if you want to, but um, I recommend waiting until the end to paint your sides. All right. So once you have that painted guys, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna dry it with my hair dryer. So um, it's nice and dry. Um, and for those of you who might be wondering, whenever I dry paint on my canvas, I always put it um, on the highest setting. So I like to do the lowest temperature on the highest like blast setting. So I go on the highest like where there's the most air and then I kind of switch back and forth between hot and cold. So I'll go warm and I feel like my painting is getting kind of warm. I switch to the my little cold blaster button and back and forth. Once you have your base coat done, we are going to start painting those stripes. So you can see those stripes in the background uh, and we're going to do these very loosely. I know a lot of you are going to want to spend a lot of time and be perfectionists and make sure they're perfectly even and um, level, but that's not how it looks in this painting. If you see, they're very loose, they're very painterly, they're definitely not um, perfectly um, level, they're definitely not perfectly evenly spaced. So we're going to do our best so they look um, neat and tidy. We don't want them to be messy, but you can see they're, they're just super loose. They're super like brush strokey. Um, so don't stress. Okay. So to do that, um, we are going to go ahead and grab our number eight flat brush. So if you have like a quarter inch flat or even a half inch flat, that's totally fine. Um, just, just a tiny flat brush is all you need. And we're going to um, go off of the color we just mixed. So this color of our background, 
we're going to like, if you have some left on your palette, great. If not, you might want to mix a little more and we're going to add even more white because we want it to be just a shade or two lighter than our background. So you can see this light blue here, just a couple shades lighter than our background. So similar color, um, but like I said, more white. So we're going to head and mix that on our palette. So as you can see, I kind of, I saw that I was getting to the same color um, that I had before. And then I just kind of kept mixing more white in. I, I kept it going a little bit lighter because I want, like I said, I want it to be a shade or two lighter than the color that we have. So I'll let you guys just catch up for a second. Whenever I mix with my paintbrush, I always like to, um, rinse my brush off before I actually start painting on my canvas. I never want to have all of my paint in my brush making it moppy because that just, you have less control of how you are applying the paint to your canvas. How's everybody doing, Kira? Good. I think you can go ahead. Okay, cool. All right, so like I said, I've got my number eight flat brush. And I have this light blue that I just mixed, which is just really the same color as our background, but we added a little more white, so it's a little bit lighter. And again, do not stress. I know that a lot of people out there are perfectionists and they want everything to be perfect. They, they want to go, you know, break out the stencil tape and start taping it off. But this is just meant to be very light and loose stripes. It's not going to be perfect. You can see I'm just using the flat edge as in my guide. That's how wide it's going to be. And I'm just slowly dragging my hand across the canvas to make these really loose and painterly fun stripes. Because all the details going on top, you'll never notice if the stripes are not perfect. You can see we're gonna put all this texture over it. We're gonna be focusing on the snow globe. That's definitely gonna be the focus of the painting. So don't worry about the stripes being perfect. It's kind of the look we're going for. It's kind of like a fun um, um, sort of difference because this is gonna be really neat and, perf and crisp and the background's kind of like loose. It's gonna be really cute. So I'm just going about mm, an inch apart, but I'm definitely eyeballing it. And you can see when I'm painting straight lines, I'm holding my brush and I'm sort of steadying my hand with my, my pinky on my canvas. So here, I'll kind of maybe tilt it so you guys can see. I have my pinky there bracing my hand to kind of keep it steady. So that's just a little tip. I'm holding my pinky down and that keeps my hand steadier, keeps it from being shaky so that I can get a nice, even line or as even as I want it to be. Right, so if you guys wanna watch um, the overhead view is what you wanna be able to see. It's the plaid comms view and not the plaid comms iPhone. So you wanna look at the plaid comms because that's going to be the overview, the overhead view, and that's where you're gonna be able to see Jesse painting. That's the one that's spotlighted. So again, I'm just using this flat brush, my small flat brush, and I'm just dragging my brush across. As you can see, my lines are not perfectly even. They're not perfectly spaced. They're not even perfectly level. Um, I just want some nice loose stripes for a nice, acute patterned background. If you feel your brush is dragging a little, feel free to dip it in just a tiny bit of water just to keep your brush um, gliding across the canvas smoothly. Super loose, definitely not perfect. And we get to the bottom, don't stress because we're gonna paint that a different color. So do not worry about that. Okay, so you can see super loose. Not perfect. I tried to keep them as neat as I could, but I, I kind of like the imperfection of these stripes. <clears throat> oh, 
Okay. So once you have that, um, we're gonna grab some silver marlin, which is just this pretty silvery gray color. And it's not metallic, it's called silver marlin, but it's not a metallic paint, it's just a flat color. Um, if you wanna use metallic, by all means, you can totally do that. Um, but this is like a pretty blue gray. So if you don't have silver marlin at home, um, you can mix, um, I would mix black and white with some blue and you'll get a similar color to this. So black and white and blue, um, and you'll get a nice bluish gray. So I'm going to grab my three fourths inch flat brush again. So um, we're gonna paint just the bottom section here of our maybe two inches from the bottom um, to kind of paint this table or ground or whatever we're imagining our snow globe to be sitting on. So it's not just floating in the air. So I'm kind of just gonna go as neatly as I can. Uh, again, we're not gonna use tape or anything. So we're just gonna try to get it as tidy as we can, but I kind of like, like I said, the contrast between the loose um, painterly background with, it's gonna be a really tight and sort of um, crisp snow globe on top of it. I, I like the way that looks together. So I'm gonna go about two inches up, which is really like two brush strokes. So like the width of my brush once across the bottom and then the width of my brush once just above that should be about two inches. Cause our brush is about an inch. It's, it's a little less, it's three quarters of an inch, but it's good enough for me. So again, a silver, a gray, a blue, black and white to make a gray, add a little bit of blue to that. Any of those colors will work for this. You could even Absolutely. do a tan if you want it to look more like kind of like a barn wood or brown. Yeah, totally. You, you can do any color you want for this. It can be a black, it could be white. It's totally up to you, whatever color you want this. I'm imagining it to be like maybe a table or something. So whatever color you want that to be on your painting. Or if maybe a different color matches your house. If you have like warmer tones in your house, you might want to just do a brown for this. Totally up to you. So just one flat coat on there. And again, I did about two um, brush widths. So I painted one stroke with my brush and then a second stroke right above that. So that's about how high up you want to go for your 10 by 10 canvas. Uh, Payne's gray would work, someone asked. So any type yeah, of gray would work. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just gonna rinse my brush off and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna dry it. So if you guys are ahead, um, go ahead and start drying your painting now. If not, you'll have just a second to catch up. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna dry my painting. So it's silver marlin and if you don't have it, it just needs to be like a light to medium gray or silver. Any of it would work great. Yep. Or any color that you want. Yeah, really. <laughs> or any any paint you have. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Whatever you've got at home will be perfect. <laughs> okay, so um, I've got my stripes painted. I've got my um, bottom painted. It's nice and dry. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my cereal bowl and we're going to start tracing it real quick. So I got that handy. Uh, and if you guys joined us last week when we painted the um, fall wreath, this is the same bowl I used then. So if you got that same bowl that you used last week, you can go ahead and grab that because that's the same one that I've got here. It's the same size circle as our fall wreath. So just a little tidbit in case you were with us last week. Um, okay, cool. So I'm going to grab a tiny liner brush. So this is a number three round brush. So if you've got like a 
um, like a small, you know, liner brush, like a little small round brush like this. Um, go ahead and grab that now. And we're going to water down a little bit of white so we can draw our, um, so we can trace our bowl. So um, if you don't want to do this, if you've got a pencil nearby, you can go ahead and grab that or some chalk or something. Um, go ahead and grab a pencil, but I just rarely use pencils in my painting. I just like to stick with paint. So, um, so yeah, like I said, if you've got a pencil, if you've got one nearby, feel free to use that. But I'm just going to pick up a little bit of water. You can see I've got my, again, number three round, a tiny little round brush, and I'm watering down some white paint. I'm just dipping my brush in water and mixing it with my white. So I have, it's a, almost an inky consistency, some very thin, thin paint. And that's because I want to be really light in case I make some sort of mistake, it's easy to touch up. So the lighter it is, the easier it is to fix. So I know it's hard to see because it's white, but I just have like a very thin white paint in my brush. So I've got my bowl and I'm going to sort of center it um, but I don't want it completely centered. I want it centered from left to right, but I want it to be a little above center um, from the bottom because I want to leave room for the base of my snow globe. So you can see here, there's a little bit of space um, up until the top. But we've got more space down here because that's where we're going to have the base of our snow globe. So you can see here, I've got it evenly spaced from the left to the right, and then I've got probably an inch above it and then probably an inch below it between my bottom and my bowl. So go ahead and try to center your bowl just as best you can. And I've got my really thin white paint that I've watered down with water. And I've got a tiny thin liner brush and I'm just gonna gently trace that line using my liner brush and my white paint. So again, if you've got a pencil, feel free to use that. That's probably a little bit easier, but I just, if you don't have a pencil, here's how you can use paint. So I'm just going around carefully. And again, I'm using a very light color so that I can touch it up easily if, if I were to make some sort of error or if it were to you know, run or something like that. I don't wanna mess up my background, but I can easily fix it. It's such a light white color. And Jesse's using Craft Smart brushes tonight, but our soft brushes would also work. Yeah. Great option. Yeah, Michaels has tons of awesome brushes. They basically have a whole aisle of brushes. So. Um, whatever you've got at home, if it looks similar to the brush I'm using, then I'm sure it's good. So whatever you need to hold up a brush, if you've got one that looks just like that or looks similar, then go ahead and use that one. Doesn't need to be exact. Again, I'm just making sure I've got all of the edges painted because I don't want to miss any. I want to have a nice crisp circle when I pick up my bowl. So there we go. Yeah, okay, so I missed a little on top. You can see here, I kind of missed that top part. So I'm gonna line my bowl back up and make sure that I get that because I wanna know where that line is so that when I go to paint the inside of my bowl, it's a nice crisp circle. So you can just line it right back up and fill it in. Okay, so now I'm gonna pick it up. Okay, so you can see here, if you look on the overhead, I've got a nice light line. I can see it very well for painting, um, but it'll be easy to cover up. So that's why we water down that white. It almost looks like a chalk line, but it's more permanent, of course, it's paint. Um, so I have this nice light line that we're gonna follow with our um, deep green color that we're about to make. Okay. So um, the next thing we're going to do, like I said, we're going to mix this um, dark green color here. So we're going to mix, we're going to mix a color there because um, I don't know, I just really wanted to have a very unique color palette for this painting. Um, and I kind of just wanted to make up my own color. So it's sort of like this pretty like turquoisey emerald color. So we're going to make that. So I've already got some teal on my palette. So I'm going to hang on to that on my palette because I'm going to use that. And then I'm also going to grab some of my um, clover, which is my green color. I'm going to put some of that on my palette. And I'm also going to grab some navy blue. I want some navy blue as well. And we're going to mix those three colors together. So I'm going to use um, 
my three fourths inch flat brush to do this. So this is the largest brush we have um, in this pack. If you've got the same pack as me, so the three fourths inch flat brush, make sure it's nice and dry. And I'm going to start with just a little bit of each color. I'm going to do about one part each. So I'm going to pick up some of my teal. I'm going to pick up some of my clover and I'm going to pick up some of my navy and I'm going to mix those together and see what that color's like. Hopefully it'll be something close to what we're looking for. So yeah, you can see we're getting really close already with just just even ratio of teal, clover, and navy blue. We have a, we have really close to what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and add some more of each so I have more paint. So teal, clover, and navy blue, and we're going to mix those together. And we get this really pretty, um, very rich <coughs> emerald color. Give you guys just a second to mix that. Again, it was one part teal, one part clover, and one part navy blue. And we get this really pretty emeraldy green color. Right, and if you don't have the green, you could just mix the the blues together, the teals together. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you just mix those together, put a touch of yellow in, and it'll be closer to mine. Because if you think about it, I mean, we all know, you know, the color wheel, blue and green. I mean, blue and yellow make green. So if you don't have green and you're already using blue, add a little bit of yellow in and it'll be greener. So there's always ways to come up with the colors that you need with what you've got at home. Okay, so once you've got that mixture, um, it should look something like this, something similar to the background of our snow globe. We are going to use a smaller brush to start painting around the edge of our um, snow globe. So I'm gonna switch over to my number eight flat brush. And I just wanna make sure I get, like I said, I keep saying this, I really do want a nice crisp edge on my snow globe because of course it's glass. So it's gonna be a perfect um, circle. So we're gonna just gonna try to get it as tidy as we can. Of course, nobody's perfect. I'm certainly not. So I'm definitely gonna have, you know, a little mess up here and there, but I'm gonna try my best to keep it as neat as I can. So again, I've got my tiny flat brush, which is a number eight flat. And I've picked up this color that I've just mixed. And I'm just gonna go carefully with the edge of my paintbrush around the circle that we traced with our cereal bowl. And they can get all in the middle. So don't worry, you can even just do that now. Don't worry about getting that um, messy because we're gonna fill all that in anyway. But right now I'm just focusing on going nice and neatly around the edge of my circle. Just trying my best to just be nice and neat and go close up to that edge. Again, don't stress if it's not perfect because really nothing ever is and that's okay. I have an aunt who's like an avid um, like crocheter and knitter. She likes both and she also is really into rug hooking and whenever she makes a project she always messes up one stitch on purpose, which like, I think is so funny to me. She's like, nothing's ever perfect. So I just go ahead and get it over with. <laughs> so she'll just mess up one stitch on purpose. And then she feels like less stressed for the rest of the project about getting it right. And I just love that. I think that's so funny. So just go ahead and get that messiness over with and then try your best for the rest. Again, I'm just using the edge of my brush to get right up to the edge as close as I can. And so if you're painting this in the future, um, if you're just watching now and you really want to have that like super crisp snow globe, um, you've got a little bit more time than we do tonight. What you can do is you can trace um, your snow globe on a piece of paper and use that as a stencil. So you can grab like even like cardstock or something you can trace this on cardstock and cut it out with scissors and then use that as a stencil so you'll get perfectly crisp edges because the rest of your painting will be masked. So again, if you're painting this later on, if you're going to go back and watch the recording on michaels.com, um, that's just a little, a little tip. If you've got a little more time later on and you want to make sure that you get a nice, perfectly crisp circle, um, that's one way you could do it. But tonight we're just going to try our best. Thank you. 
And you can see I'm turning my painting around as I go because it's easier for me to sort of pull down. I'm right-handed. Um, so if you're left-handed, it might be easier for you to pull down this way, but I turn my painting as I go so I can pull down and I, my hand is as comfortable as it can be to get the line as perfect as I want it. If I was trying to go up this way and go down, I wouldn't have as much control because my it just doesn't feel as natural for my arm. So that's why I'm turning my canvas to go um, to, to suit me, to suit where it feels best for me. Everybody's so quiet. I guess you're concentrating on. Yeah, everybody's painting. just painting. <laughs> Good. I keep. I can see like every once in a while. I can just see a, the chat pop up, but I'm not really able to read it as I'm painting, of course. But I see there's nobody chatting. Everybody's just really concentrating on their circles, which is good. Okay, so I have just finished out my circle and you can see there's a little bit of, you know, it, it's pretty neat. I tried my best. You guys saw how careful I was being, but it's not 100% perfect. It's a little bit, you know, lumpy in some areas, but that's okay. Like I said, I just wanted as neat as I can. And if yours doesn't look just like mine, that is okay too. It does not need to. So I'm rinsing my brush off. And I'm just going to switch to a bigger brush um, to fill in the center just because it'll be um, quicker. So I'll get more quicker coverage with a larger brush. I'm just going to fill in the center now, now that I've got all of the edges neatly painted. I'm running out of paint, so I'm gonna mix a tiny bit more. I'm just right at the end and I'm running out. I was hoping I could stretch it, but I could not. Circle looks pretty perfect. Thank you. Like I said, I tried my best. But if yours is not perfect, that is okay. You could always go back cool. after once it's dry and touch it up. Absolutely, you could for sure. Um, and also, everybody's gonna be focused on the cute snowman that you're gonna paint inside your circle. Right. So don't really care about that. That's the best part. So just finish up painting inside um, our circles. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and paint the base of our snow globe real quick. Um, so if you've got your pencil out, you can use that. But again, just like before, I'm gonna go ahead and use a paintbrush. So I'm going to do the same thing we did before um, to paint our circle. I've got my number three round brush, which is a very tiny, tiny round brush, a liner brush, if you've got that. And I'm gonna, thin down some white with some water. So I have it very thin. It's almost like an inky consistency. And I am going to um, start painting the base of my snow globe. So as you can see here, we're just gonna do our best to follow the shape here. We've got a curve that almost matches the curve of our snow globe. It's a little bit um, less acute. It's a little bit wider of a curve. It's not quite as um, tight of a curve as this one. 
So a little less wide of a curve, or I'm sorry, a little more wide of a curve, um, that, but really does follow that. And then just two curved edges. So again, I'm doing my best. I'm just gonna sort of eyeball it. This part's definitely not gonna be perfect. But we're gonna do our best to make it tidy. And again, I'm just using very watered down white right now. And the reason is just like before, it is gonna be really easy to fix. If I do something kind of weird and my, my hand slips or something, it's gonna be super easy to correct. So I'm doing this curve that's a little wider than our snow globe curve right underneath, sort of this smile face. And then I'm just gonna connect it on the sides with another, with two other curved lines, just to make that little base of the snow globe there. So I've got my two lines, I'm gonna make it a little lighter now since I've got it where I want it. Oops, see, I messed up there. So since it's so wet and, and light, I can just, wipe it off with my finger. And that's why I made it like that. Um, really thin white paint, because it's super easy to fix if you make a line that you don't like. So again, you can feel free to do this with a pencil if you've got a pencil handy. Um, but this is how you can do it with paint if you don't have a pencil handy. So you can see I've got my little snow globe base shape just sort of sketched on there. I always say that like I'm sketching with a paintbrush, just a very loose little um, outline of where I want that to be. And now that I've got that, I'm going to mix um, my silver marlin. So that's the gray color. And we've talked about that before when we were painting the bottom. If you don't have that exact one, it's totally fine. You can mix black and white to get it because of course it's just a gray color. Um, or you can just use like a silver or just a different gray color you have. That's totally fine. Um, that said, I'm going to take my silver marlin and I'm going to mix it with coffee bean. So this is just a chocolatey brown color. And we're gonna get this sort of taupey color that we have here on our base. So put a little coffee bean on my palette. And I'm going to grab, where's my little flat brush? Hmm, what do I do with them? He's around. Um, I guess, oh, here it is. I'm gonna grab my little flat brush my number eight flat, the one that we used um, to paint our stripes. And I'm gonna mix one part silver marlin and one part coffee bean, and we'll see how we like that. Move it in so you can see. One part silver marlin to one part coffee bean. And we're, like I said, we're looking for sort of like a cool taupey color. I actually like that. So I'm gonna mix a little more, a scoop of silver marlin and an even scoop of coffee bean. I'm gonna add a little bit more coffee bean because it's looking a little bit gray to me. And I want it to be a little bit warmer. Okay, so I like that color. So here, you can see here, the color, it's like a taupey brown color, like a, like a very, very, very warm gray. And we've got our number eight flat brush and we're gonna use this to just paint in that shape that we just sort of outlined for the base of our snow globe. And we're just kind of doing all this, these parts, um, sort of the big base shapes of our painting before we get to the really fun part, which is painting inside the snow globe and all the fun little details that you can personalize. So when we get to that part, um, after I show you how to paint all of the different um, items in our snow globe, so we'll, we'll paint the snowman together, we'll paint the trees together, of course. I'm just gonna show you how to paint different little um, details on your snowmen, because then I want you to totally personalize your own based on your family or based on your group of friends or who, whatever you want your snowmen to um, sort of impersonate or sort of replicate or just your imagination, however you want your snowman family to look. I want you to personalize your snowman to look um, how you want it. So um, when we get to that part, like I said, I'm just gonna show you how to paint all the different little uh, details and accessories and things like that. So you can you can decide what you want your snow snowmen to have. So that's gonna be really fun. It's gonna be kind of like paper dolls or something, <laughs> which I always loved. And I'm just being careful to get right up to the edge of my snow globe, my green orb that we painted. 
being as careful as I can. If you get it a little bit um, over the edge, don't worry because we're going to cover it up with snow anyway. So do not stress. And then once you do that, guys, um, you can go ahead and um, dry it with your hair dryer. We're gonna go ahead and dry our full painting before we continue. Nice and dry. and dry. So now we're getting to the fun part. We are going to start um, painting some of the fun details. Okay, so first um, we're going to kind of paint this in layers. Um, so we've got our background color and the next thing in these um, layers are going to be the um, trees. So we're going to paint, you can see here, we've got these curved um, uh, pine trees or Christmas trees or whatever, however you want to think of them um, in our snow globe. And so the reason we curve them is because it makes it look um, like they're in that, like the front of our snow globe is round. Like the way you're looking into it, um, everything looks rounded because it's inside this globe. So that's why we curve them so that it looks, it makes it look more realistic, like how it would look inside a real snow globe. The perspective is, is super warped. So that said, um, I still have some clover on my um, palette. So if you don't have clover on your palette, go ahead and put it there now. Um, if you don't have clover at all, if you don't have any sort of green, you can mix medium yellow and navy blue and you'll get a nice green color. So go ahead and mix those if you don't have green. Um, but we, I have clover, so I've got that out. <clears throat> and I'm going to grab my <clears throat> excuse me, let me clear my throat. Um, I'm going to grab my number 10 round brush. This is the big guy. This is the big round brush. Um, we, I don't use him that much actually, but we're going to use him for our trees right now. I'm actually also going to, I've got some white on my palette. So if you need some more white, go ahead and put that on your palette as well, because we're going to lighten our green just a tiny bit so it doesn't blend in with our background too much. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to wet my brush because I don't think I've actually used this one before. I'm not positive, but I'm going to wet my brush so it's nice and soft. And I'm going to pick up some clover and I'm going to put just a dab of white into it. Just a dab. You can see I just barely touched white on my brush and I'm going to mix that into my green because I just want to be a, a slight bit lighter. I'm putting just a little white as I go because I want to be a little lighter than this sort of like grassy green we have here just so it pops off of the background better. I'm putting a little more white as I go just to lighten it slowly. I don't want to put too much white in that first and get it too light. So again, we're using clover and wicker white. If you've already got a light green at home, that'll work. If you don't have green, you can mix blue and yellow to get green. And again, whenever I mix colors with my brush on my palette, I always rinse off my brush before I paint with it because I don't want it to be so moppy. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to draw lines to sort of mark where our trees are going to go. They're essentially going to be the trunks of our trees. So we're not going to see the trunks, of course, because they're evergreen trees. So they're going to be really full. 
that's kind of just gonna um, sort of mark out where we want our trees to be. So here, I'm gonna use my brush and I'm gonna pick up some of this light green that we just mixed. And you can see what I'm doing, I'm twirling my brush in it. I'm twirling my, the tip of my brush in my paint and that's how I get this really sharp point on my brush. Here, I'm just gonna make it so you guys can see it. Can you guys see that? I have a nice sharp point on the tip of my brush and that's because I twirled it. Twirl it in your paint and you'll get a nice sharp tip and that's what we want. So we're going to go about a half an inch from the left side of our snow globe. And I'm gonna start about here, about you know two thirds of the way up. And I'm gonna paint a line, just a thin line going down the side. So I've got my, that's gonna be the center of my far left tree. So that's gonna be where the center is. And then right next to him is gonna be a slightly shorter tree and he's gonna mimic the same shape. So a shorter tree there. So these are gonna be these two trees. You can see they're really curved, kind of like parentheses almost. So a larger one, and a smaller one. And then once you've got that, we're gonna completely mirror it on the other side. So on this side, I'm gonna have my larger tree here. And then my smaller tree right next to that one. And if this isn't perfect, don't stress because we're gonna paint over these lines. This is just for kind of for our knowledge to know where we want our trees to be. We're about to paint all of those um, tree details right over it. Okay, so your painting should look like this right now. We've got this light green color and we've got these sort of four parentheses almost. We've got two larger ones on the outside and then two smaller ones on the inside. So go ahead and make sure you have that down before we start painting um, with our, before we start painting um, all of the, the um, fullness in our trees. And again, we're using a large round brush for this part. I've got my Did you read 10. my lips? I was on mute and asked you at the same time you answered. Oh, no, I can't see you. I can only see you around. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, we've got our number 10 round brush. So this is this big guy in our pack. It's a big round brush. Okay. So oh, once you've got that, um, we're going to start, we're going to hang on to this brush. I haven't cleaned it yet. Um, I'm still using my number 10 round brush. And we are going to start painting some of these um, sort of uh, foliage, sort of the greenery on it. So I'm going to show you really quick on my palette what that's going to look like. Um, because, okay, so if I'm going to paint a tree that's perfectly straight, it's going to be like this. And my leaves are going to go down like that. And by leaves, I mean, you know, uh, uh, pine needles or whatever it is on this tree. They're gonna go down like that, right? Because my tree is straight up and down. So that's, you know, roughly what the Christmas tree would look like. Our tree though, since it's in a warped perspective because it's inside this globe, our um, little branches are all gonna go to one side. So they're going to follow the curve of our tree. So on this side, they're gonna swoop in and on this side, instead of swooping out that way, they're also going to swoop in. So I know that seems kind of weird, but they're going to be like that instead. So if you guys have ever painted evergreen trees before, you know the easiest way to do it, like I said, is to just swoop the branches out on either side. And that's how you get, you know, a Christmas tree or an evergreen tree or whatever it is that you're painting. But for this one, like I said, we're going to change it up a little so that it looks like it's in this little globe here. And it's going to be curved. I'm going to go in and then also in. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. So it looks like it's, it's like it's curved over. So that being said, we're gonna start painting that the branches onto our um, lines that we just painted onto our globe. And I actually ran out of paint a little bit here. So I'm gonna mix a little bit more. So again, I've got my clover and a little bit of white. And again, whenever I mix paint with my brush, sorry, I'm a little crooked there. Whenever I mix paint with my brush, I always rinse it off before I put it onto my canvas because I don't want all of, I don't want so much paint in my brush when I'm painting because it'll just get moppy and it's hard to control. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit of paint on the end of my brush and we're gonna do just how I showed you over here. Here, I'll, I'll pull this back into view just for a second. So you can see how we curve them this way. So this side all the way to the left it's going to be curving in 
and sort of flicking out to the right. Can you see how I'm doing that there? I'm just flicking my hand. I'll hold it up closer. Can you see how I sort of flicked it out to the right? And on the left side, it's gonna do the same thing. So flick it out to the right. It's gonna be curved in the same direction, which feels weird if you're used to painting um, evergreen trees like this, you're like, oh, it's supposed to flick out to the left. But for this one, it's gonna flick out to the right. Technical flick out. What'd you say? Very technical, flick out. Yeah, very technical term, flick it out. <laughs> <laughs> Andy would be laughing at me. If you guys have painted oh, with he would not be happy. He's been painting since he was a small, small child, and he would not be happy with that term. That's okay. <laughs> I love He's it. He's not happy. <laughs> okay, so we're do the same thing for this smaller tree. We're going to flick those little branches out to the right, and we're do the same thing on the other side. And also going to be flicked in the same direction. So it should look something like that. And we're looking a little flat right now. We're going to add a little bit more dimension to that, so don't stress. So for the other side, just like before, we're going to completely mirror it. So this side's going to be going down again. It's going to curve in on itself. This side's going to be going down. And then this side's flicking out again. And again, it feels kind of unnatural to paint this way because that's not really the way trees are. But the reason we're doing this is because you want it to look like it's like it's warped. The perspective is totally off because we're looking at it through a glass globe. So it should look something like this. Grab a new paper towel. <clears throat> so after you've done that, um, we're gonna hang on to the same brush. We're gonna keep doing green. We just want to add a couple of little details to that. Not a ton, nothing crazy. It's not going to take very long. Um, but I still have my big round brush, my number 10 round brush. And I'm going to grab some um, clover. I'm going to mix it with just a tiny bit of navy, just the tiniest bit of navy. So I've got clover mixed with navy. So I have a darker green now. Just a tiny bit of navy, not a lot. You don't want it to be super dark, just, just darker than the color we have. And I'm just going to go over it and just add a little bit of um, dimension to it. So here, I'm just gonna go like every once in a while to sort of like um, emphasize those branches to sort of just clarify them a little. Every once in a while, I'm gonna put a little bit of that darkness in there just so you can see a little bit more of the detail. Again, same brush. I'm just sort of going over it and adding some more of that color. And you can see here, look, in our final painting, if your trees aren't perfect, we're just going to get covered up with a lot of, you know, glass texture. So this is just, we're doing lots of layering in this snow globe. So it looks like there's a whole world in a tiny little globe. Um, so this is really going to get kind of covered up. You're going to, of course, going to see some of it. That's why we're doing it. Um, but if it's not perfect, just don't stress about it because we're going to be painting right on top of it too. Mine's certainly not perfect. It's going to be different every time you paint it. Jesse, could you hold the painting up to the um, camera real quick? You can see here, just really yep. loose. I just added some darkness to it. So you can kind of see, it kind of makes some of the branches a little more pronounced. So they weren't so uh, blurred together. Yeah, it gives it more like depth and dimension. Yeah, definitely. That's what we're going for. Everybody just a second to catch up. Okay. Is everybody do okay on their trees, Kira? Yeah. We're gonna start moving on. Okay. -dokey. So now that we've got our trees painted again. It was not perfect. Don't stress, because you can see here in the final painting, look how much you can see the trees. <laughs> the answer is not much, because <laughs> we're gonna be painting snowmen in front of it, and then we're gonna be painting some glass texture on top of it. So the trees really blend into the background. We just want them there because it's cute. And of course you want it to look like there's more of a universe inside the snow globe. 
Um, so again, if they're not perfect, we're just going to paint on top of it. So do, do not stress. Um, what we're going to do next is we're going to paint in the white bottom of the snow. So the so snowy ground inside our snow globe, that is what we're going to paint now. So to do that, I'm going to grab my number eight flat brush. And all we're going to be using is wicker white. So just plain old white. We're not going to be doing any mixing. I'm going to pick up some white on my, again, number eight flat brush. So you can see here, I made it sort of like, um, it's not even, it's sort of like a bumpy little snowy area, like the snow has been piling up. So I'm going to use the tip of my brush to sort of draw that line. So I'm going to use the, the edge of my brush, the flat edge, and I'm going to kind of just, just loosely paint in that line. You can see, I don't want to see perfect. I want it to look like a little, a little snowy area. It definitely wouldn't be flat. There's more snow in some areas than others. So there's a little line like that. And then we're going to just going to fill it in and be careful with the edge of the snow globe because we want to keep that crisp line that we painted our, um, you know, with our glass orb. We don't want that to change. Um, so be careful on the edge, but we're just going to fill it in with white. Just plain white. Just using the edge of my brush to get right up to that edge. Just filling it in. Oops, I got too much water on there. You never want to have too much water in your brush because it just starts to um, dilute your paint. You can see here why it looks really light right there. It's because I had way too much water in my brush and it just totally diluted my paint. And it really started wiping the paint off of my canvas, which of course is not what we want. We are putting paint on the canvas. So never let your brush get too wet. Okay. Get as smooth as I can. We can always go back and do a second coat on this in a minute if we feel like we need to, just because we painted it on a really dark background. So if you feel like there's some of the darkness just coming through, that's okay. We can go back and do um, a second coat. And we're getting to the fun part. We're getting to uh, the customizable part, which is, in my opinion, the best part. So give everybody a second to paint their snow before we get to that part. I think everybody is painting along and very quiet. Oh, good, good, I'm glad. So while you guys are painting in your snowbank, um, I want you to be thinking about who your snowmen are going to be. <laughs> so is it going to be your family? Is it going to be you and your significant other? Is it going to be you and a group of friends? Are you going to make it for somebody else's family? Um, I wouldn't recommend putting in more than say five snowmen because they're going to get kind of <laughs> tiny. That's kind of a lot. You can see here I have three here, which fit pretty nicely. We could definitely fit a couple more if we needed to. Um, but just keep that in mind. So whoever this painting is for, whether it's for yourself, um, just keep it in mind. I, I, I try not to go over five snowmen. If you want to, by all means, you could fit in some tiny snowmen, but that's just my recommendation. So just in your mind, be thinking about how many snowmen are gonna be in your painting um, and who those snowmen might be before we um, get into the next step of painting the, the sort of the balls of each of the snowmen, the snowballs. Hmm. Okay, so, um, so we can go ahead and get started. 
So like I was saying, so hopefully you have in your mind who you want these snowmen to be. Um, like I said, I have three snowmen here. It's kind of like, you know, a, a mom, dad, and a child, you know, it can be any variety of family that um, matches your family though. It doesn't have to be the same as mine, of course. Um, so I kind of have like a, like a, a, ma a masculine snowman man in the middle and he's a little bit taller. I have a smaller, like maybe mom snowman over here and then an even smaller snowman over here that I, I was just kind of imagining to be the child when I was painting it. Um, so if there's only one adult in your family, maybe have one taller snowman and then, you know, smaller ones for children. Um, or if you just have like really short people in your family, they can be tiny snowmen. If you have tall people, they can be tall snowmen. So it's just super customizable to look like your family or your friends or whoever you want it to be. You need a snow so dog and a snow cat, Jesse. You could do a snow dog and a snow cat. That would be really cute. Um, it's totally up to you. So for me, I'm going, I have three in my example one, but I'm going to paint two snowmen tonight because I'm going to do me and my husband. So I'm going to start, I'm going to try to space them out. So you kind of want to think about it. You know, where are your snowmen going to be? How are you going to space them? If you have an odd number, you can start with one in the middle and then just start evenly making your snowmen on either side. If you have an even number, you'll want to have two in the middle and then start going on either side. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. So an easy way that we're going to start mapping out our snowmen, we're going to do it similarly to the way we did our trees. So like I said, if you've got an odd number, say you have three, you want to start dead center with your first snowman and then have snowmen going out on either side, either two on each side or one on each side, depending on how big your group of snowmen is. If you have an even number, they want to be two that are centered together and then have either one on either side or one, you know, two on either side, up to you. So like I said, I'm going to have two snowmen. So I'm going to make two of mine centered. So I'm going to do a little bit of a line, just how we did the trees. So I'm going to do a white line going down. So that's where one snowman will be. And then a white line going down here. That's where my other snowman will be. Okay. So again, if you were going to have five snowmen, you want one in the middle and then two on either side. And again, keeping in mind the heights of what you want, who you want your snowmen to be. So I'll let everybody get their lines drawn in to sort of match, you know, the heights or the number of people or number of snowmen that you're going to be painting. Oops. Give everybody a second to do that. So once you have your snowmen mapped out, we can start painting um, the snowballs of each of our snowmen. So of course, traditional snowmen are made up of three, um, you know, snow balls that you would roll in the snow to make your snowman. So that's how we're going to paint our snowmen tonight. So to do that, I'm going to start with the largest circle on the bottom. Just getting, I'm gonna, I'm just using white. I haven't changed my brush. I still have my number eight flat brush with just regular white. I'm gonna start painting the circle. Okay, I'm gonna start on my left snowman. So here, I'll, I'll make it higher so you guys can see better. So I'm gonna start on this one here. I'm gonna start in the middle for my bottom circle and I'm gonna go left and then I'm gonna go right to get a nice even circle. And it's a little bit wider. It's not a perfect circle. You can see here, my little um, circles are a little bit wider. They're not perfectly round, which I kind of like. It kind of looks like the snow has been kind of like squashed down a little, just kind of like how real snow might look. So I've got my left and then my right, and then you can just fill that in. And do the same thing for this one here. I've got left and right, almost kind of how you would paint a pumpkin, and then fill that in. And again, you can keep in mind now whether it's an adult snowman or a child snowman um, and make the balls either larger or smaller, depending. So I've got my two base snow circles. You can see it's not full coverage yet. We can go back and, re and cover it with a second coat. So don't stress about that. So I'm gonna do the second circle sort of building up on those just a tiny bit smaller than the first. So starting here, I'm gonna go to the left and then to the right, and same thing for my second snowman. And don't forget, you want to do this for all your snowmen to the left and to the right. 
and then fill them in. And then for the heads, we're gonna do the same thing, left and right, and left and right. My snowmen are about the same height because my, my husband's a little bit taller than me, but not much, so we're about even. I'm so short, I think I would only have two snowballs. <laughs> okay, that's fine too. <laughs> if maybe you want to do your children with only two snowballs, if that's easier for you, you absolutely could. Or if you're a tiny person like Kira. <laughs> if I'm sitting on my knees to sit in this chair so the camera can hit me. <laughs> yeah, maybe you would only need two snowballs. That's true. <laughs> okay, so now that we've got those in. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start painting some of the details um, around some of the texture around our snowmen. So that way our last step can be adding the details to the snowmen and everyone can kind of take their own time to decorate their snowmen at your own pace. Cause I know that you might only have one snowman, you might have five snowmen. So it's definitely gonna take people a different amount of time. And I don't want you to miss any of the steps you need. So we're gonna do the textures and then you're gonna paint, like I said, the accessories at the end so you can really take your time. But I'm gonna show you how to do those, don't, don't worry. <clears throat> okay, that said, we are going to start adding some fun textures to our painting because it's looking a little flat here. You can see it's, it's nice and fun and textured here. It's looking a little flat around it. So we, we don't want that. We want it to be nice and um, realistic looking. <clears throat> so I am going to grab my three fourths inch flat brush. So this is our big flat brush that we have. And I'm going to pick up some wicker white, just a little bit. So everybody take a look now, just so because you want to keep up with these steps and you can go back and finish your snowman later. So go ahead and take a peek at what we're doing. I have some paint on my brush and then I'm going to wipe most of it off onto my paper towels. So you can see here, <laughs> there's barely any paint. I just wiped most of it off. You see that? You can see there's hardly any paint in there. I didn't put it in water. I just wiped it off on my paper towel because what we're going to do are these dry brushed areas here on our painting. And you don't want much paint because it's gonna be really easy to put too much paint. So the less paint you have on your brush, the better because that way you can build it up. If you have a ton of paint on your brush and you try to do that dry brush, you're gonna get a giant swipe of white. You're gonna cover up all of the detail you put into your snow globe. So the less paint, the better. You can always add more. You can never, not never, it's gonna be much harder to take it away. All right, so that said, I've got my paint on my brush, my white paint. I've wiped most of it off. I'm gonna start at the top. I wanna to make sure I have that nice crisp edge still. I'm gonna start at the top and I'm gonna pull down to the left following the shape of my snow globe. Make sure I don't have very much on there. Okay, I'm gonna start at the top. I'm gonna to pull down to the left. You can see I have very, very little paint. I'm gonna pick up a little more and then wipe most of it off. Start at the top down to the right. Okay, so mine is very um, soft, so I can go back and add a little more. I think I want a little bit more, but again, I'm building it up slowly because I don't want to just go in with like a big swipe of white because that's gonna be really hard to fix. So I put a little more on down to the left. We like that a little more. And then down to the right. That looks better. So I'm gonna go even more still, but again, I'm doing it in, in sort of layers because I don't want to rush it down to the left and then down to the right. Okay, so you can see here now we have that nice dry brush and it's making our snow globe look super round. So again, we used our 3 4 inch flat brush. We wiped most of the paint off, we're using white. We swiped down to the left with the very dry brush and then swiped down to the right and we kept doing that until we had it the way we liked it. So everybody go ahead and do that as well. And clean the brush off. do their dry brush and you shouldn't take too long. Make sure you don't put a ton of paint on your brush. Should be a pretty quick process. 
And the next thing we're going to do is we have this really pretty highlight here, this big highlight that just makes it look extra shiny. So it looks extra like glass because you have this big highlight here. So to do that, go ahead and grab your number 10 round brush, which is this big round brush that we use to paint our trees. And we're going to pick up some white on our brush. My white's getting a little dry in my palette. So if you feel like your white is really dry, you might want to put some fresh wet on your palette because you want it to be nice and creamy and smooth for this part. Mine's getting like a little bit like um, just thick. It's I can feel it thickening because it's dry here. So if you want to put some fresh white from your bottle, go ahead and do that. So what we're going to do here, I wish I had like a dark piece of paper to do an example for you on, but that's okay. I can, I can still show you. I'll show you on my um, finished painting how we did it. So what we did, so everybody take a peek at this. I've got my round brush, my number 10 round with some white paint on it. We're going to start at the top and put very little pressure on our brush. And as we go down to the right, we're going to press down and then we're going to pull up again to get this nice little um, curved shape here. And that looks like a little bit of um, a shine, a little bit of a highlight. So again, we're going to start at the top. I'm just barely putting pressure on my brush going down to the right. And then I press down in the middle of my line and then I pull back up to get a nice skinny edge. So now that we all can understand how that goes, we go ahead and do that on our painting. And if you feel like you wanna practice with your brush a little like on some paper, like nearby, feel free to do that. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do it on my painting. So again, I'm gonna start the top and I'm gonna go down to the right and press down and then pull back up. And I kind of ran out of paint at the end there. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to do it again. You can even start back at the bottom to get that nice crisp edge. Start, push down, pull up to get a nice highlight there. You can kind of go back and forth over the same line to brighten it if you want. Have a nice highlight. So it's looking super shiny. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to add some texture to our background. So after you've got your highlight in, go ahead and grab your palette knife. Um, or like I said, if you don't have a palette knife, grab an old gift card or an old credit card, and that'll really work a very similar way. It's basically the same thing. It just doesn't have a handle. So if you've got an old credit card, an old gift card, go ahead and grab that. But I've got my palette knife here. It's a straight palette knife. So I'm going to dip the bottom of the palette part, and, or I'm sorry, the knife part into my paint, into white. So you see, I dipped the bottom into white. The top is clean. There, the top is totally clean. The bottom I dipped into white, and I'm going to wipe it off onto my palette paper. So I don't have that much on there anymore. So the top is still clean. Bottom is dipped in white. And so if you're using a credit card or something, it's going to be the same thing. You're just going to use the very edge of the long side of your credit card. So I have some paint on the bottom, not a ton of paint though. You can see there's hardly any on there. And the top is clean. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to drag our palette knife all over the background around our snow globe. We don't wanna go over our snow globe with this part. This is just for the background. So I'll start up here, start dragging it gent very gently, picking up paint as you go, as you need it. You can pay close attention to the edges of your canvas. You're sort of dragging it around. I really like that sort of scraped texture. It reminds me a lot of snow and ice and things like that. So that's why I wanted to add some of this texture to this painting. I'm just dragging my palette knife all around the background. Again, we're not doing it on the snow globe part. We want to leave that clean, but we're going to add some snow to that. So don't worry. with my left hand here and make it a little easier for myself. You can do as much or as little of this as you want. It's totally up to you. I like a lot. So I'm going to go really go for it. Oops, I got some green on there. I don't want that. Being a little bit messy. So that's 
good. I like the way that looks. So I have some nice texture now on my background. Okay, so now is a good time. As you can see here, my snowmen, the circles that I painted need another coat. I can see the green coming through. So if you also need another coat, now's a good time to do that. So I'm gonna grab my small flat brush. I've got my number eight and I'm going to put it um, into my white paint and I'm just gonna do another coat on there. Now is a good time if you need one as well. If you don't, then just skip this step. Just wait a minute um, and we'll move on to more of the details. But I need another coat. And two coats will be plenty. Just following the same shape, just doing a second coat over it. So it's nice, bright, and white. You can even do it on your little snow bank at the bottom if you like that needed a second coat. Go ahead and just put another coat on there. Okay, so now it's nice and bright and white, just the way that we want it to be. And since I did put another coat on my snowman, some snowmen, you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with my hair dryer. So if you didn't, don't worry about it, but I'm gonna um, dry it just because we're gonna paint on top of it now. So um, we're going to start adding um, just a couple of details to the snowman. As you can see here, um, I have a little bit of like a blue shadow on our snowman. Here, hold it up so you can see it better. Just a little bit of like a low light on our snowman, just to make them look a little bit more dimensional, less like these little flat guys that we have here. Just make it look like there's like actually some light hitting this. You know, we've got the highlight, so we know that there's some light hitting our, our little uh, painting here. So we want to add some of those details to the snowman as well. So that color really is the same color as our background. So take it back, you know, an hour and 20 minutes, <laughs> whenever we started, and we're going to remix that color because I'm sure it's not um, on your palette anymore. I'm sure it's dried, which is okay. We're going to remix that. So I'm going to grab, that was really wet. I'm going to grab my number five round brush, just kind of like a medium round brush. And we're going to remix that. So in case you don't remember, that was teal and wicker white. So we're going to mix and it was mostly wicker white with just a little bit of teal. So go ahead and mix that now. And I can, I kind of have a reference here. Of course, we can see it on our painting too, but um, I can kind of see on my, on my palette what that color was. So that's helpful. We're just mixing, remixing that light blue. <laughs> And if anybody needs to jump off um, because it's getting late or the time change and people have things to do this evening, you can always go back and pick right back up where you left off on michaels.com on the community classroom page. Um, typically, this takes about an hour. Some of the paintings take a little bit longer because we want to make sure everybody has time to paint along. But you can absolutely go back and watch this when you have more time on demand. You can even fast forward um, through if you've already you know, gotten up to a certain point and go ahead and pick this back up. And that's what's so great about the acrylic paint is that you can let this dry and go back and add your details at another time if you need to. So lots of options. Yeah, absolutely.
Especially you know, everyone saying, you know, it's Thanksgiving. Some people have some free time, um, you know, staying in. This is a great way to, you know, stay creative and stay safe this upcoming week. Yep, absolutely. Like I said, this painting has got a little more detail than a lot of the ones we do, which is fun, but it does take a little bit longer. So if you got to pop off. That's totally fine. We will see you soon at the recording. <laughs> yep, and we'll okay. be back next week. And I have that painting to show you guys. So yeah, I think it's head... actually Andy will be here next week. Yep, it is Andy. I've got the painting right here. So we can show that to you guys at the end. Um, okay, so we've got our snowmen here. They've got our light blue mixed. I have my number five round brush and I'm gonna take, pick up some of the blue. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put little C's on the left side of each of our um, snowballs. So we're gonna start at the top one and start at the top. It's kind of the way we did the highlight almost. So we're going to start at the top and follow the edge and make a little C. My paint's drying really quick tonight. It's dry here. Make a little C on this one. And it kind of just divides up the, the um, sections of the snowman as well. And do a little C on the middle one. And I'm just following the edge of that circle. And then a C on the bottom one. And it kind of divides it um, from the base of the, uh, from a little snow bank as well. Just gives it some clarity. And then the same thing for all your snowmen. So a little C on this one, however many that is on your painting. C on that one. And then a C on the bottom. You can see it gives a lot more dimension. We can see there's some shadow going on on our snowmen now. It looks a little bit a little bit more real. All right, and once you finish your C's, I know we got a couple more steps. We're trying to keep it moving. We're going to do some um, fly specking. So if you don't know what that is, it's a super easy technique. And that's why we have this toothbrush in case you're wondering why the heck do we have a toothbrush for this painting? Um, we're gonna do what's called fly specking, which is a really um, popular technique in the decorative painting world, but it's also a really great way to paint snow flurries. So as you can see here on our um, snow globe and our final painting, we've got these cute snow flurries. It looks like it's sprinkling down um, on the snowman here. So that's what we're gonna paint now. So I'm going to dip my brush in some water, my, my uh, toothbrush in some water, and then I'm going to dip it in some white paint. So you can see here, I have a very watery paint mixture on my brush right now. You can see here, it's very watery. It's got white paint. And that's what's on my brush. So this is about to get messy. So if you're working on a surface that you don't want to get paint on, I would recommend moving to somewhere where you can get paint or maybe putting some paper underneath you or um, when I'm at home and I'm in a pinch, I like to put a trash bag underneath me to paint with because it blocks my surface and then I can just put the trash bag back under my sink and use it later. The paint doesn't hurt it. Um, so anyway, oh, I'm dripping paint on my canvas. Um, so anyway, so it might get a little messy. So just keep that in mind. Also, your hands are going to get messy, but the paint is water-based and non-toxic. So you can just wipe, wash your hands with soap and water at the end and you'll be fine. So what we're going to do, so here I'll show you on my palette. I've got my, my toothbrush here. I'm going to rake my thumb across my toothbrush and I'm gonna aim it at my painting. So right now I'm aiming at my palette and you see how we got those cute little snow textures. So here, I'll show you here. You see that, all that cute little snow flurry. So that's all we're gonna do for our painting. So I'm gonna focus it on my, the snow globe part and we're gonna paint all these cute little snow flurries looks like it's snowing inside our snow globe you can do as much of this or as little of this as you want you can see it a little bit goes a long way so you can see we've already got tons of snow in there it's a little snowstorm so yeah that's how you're going to paint the snow part you could even add some glitterific or um, extreme glitter would be really pretty too when you said that because i was thinking i was looking at some uh, hologram glitterific earlier and i was thinking why did i put that on my snow globe painting i was kind of regretting it so i love the idea of putting glitter i think that's going to be really cute i was like maybe i can add it now and i was like no it's not on the supply list okay so give me a second just to do that and then the last last step i keep saying we're getting to the end we really are at the end now i'm going to teach you how to paint the details so you can go ahead um, and customize your snowman
Okay. So to start, um, we are going to grab the color that we used for the base of our, oh, it's a little wet, for the base of our um, snow globe. So if you remember, we mixed um, coffee bean and silver marlin, which is our gray color. So if you need some more of that, go ahead. I've got my number five round brush. I'm gonna grab some silver marlin. And if you need some fresh paint, go ahead and pour some out in my coffee bean. And I'm gonna mix those two together. Add a little water because my paint's starting to dry on me. So we have this nice, cool, taupey color that we got from the base of our snow globe. I'm gonna rinse my brush off whenever I mix my brush with. So Jesse, some people are asking, your original snow globe looks like there's like a couple tones in it. On the, what do you mean? The finished, um, I'm like pointing like you can on the, see. On the base? No, in the, in the globe part, the circle, like right above the snowman, it looks like it's maybe two tones. Yeah. Somebody's asking if you could do that. You can totally you do that. Particularly or how, tell them how to do that. Yeah, absolutely. So I did do it a little bit lighter, but I'm going to be totally honest with you. It's because I had to remix the paint halfway through and that's why it doesn't match. Uh, but yeah, I did I like that way. look. I think everybody's <laughs> kind of liking that. Yeah, I was trying to cut down the steps a little, but um, but yes, absolutely. If you wanted to do that, if you haven't gotten that far yet um, and or you wanted to repaint this for a different family, um, all I did was I just made that a little bit lighter. This has just has more of, of the teal and less of the navy blue in it. So this one's a little bit darker, kind of around the edge. But again, if I'm being honest with you, it's just because I had to remix my paint halfway through and it didn't match. <laughs> but and yeah, I so totally I like both looks. I kind of like that because it gives a dimension, but I really like that dark background with all the snow is really pretty too. Yeah, it's kind of like a glowy look. But yes, that's how we got that. Yep. Yeah. I love we're just so we're all we're like, that's a mistake, but it totally worked. And then people are like, well, we want to do that. <laughs> I know it was a happy accident <laughs> for sure. But yeah, that's how, that's a little, yeah, that's all it was, was I had a little bit lighter in the center and then I blended on the edge with a little bit darker. And again, it really wasn't on purpose though. I can't take credit for that. Okay. So I've got my, um, my number five round brush and I've got my taupey color that we mixed, which again was just silver marlin mixed with coffee bean. And we are gonna paint the um, arms on our snowman. So we're gonna paint the little, um, just sticks. So they're gonna be really loose, little, just how you would paint a stick figure, really. I can show you here um, so you can see a little bit clearer. So say this is our snowman. I can really paint a lot of it on here so you can see it clear, just cause it's easier to see. And we're gonna paint some sticks kind of wider at the base and then a little thinner up on the ends coming out from um, the center from the middle part of our snowman. You can even do little branches coming out the end to look kind of like hands maybe um, or yours can be going down if you want it to be pointing down that's fine too. So wider and then thinner, wider and then thinner. And of course, to get wide um, lines, you press down on your brush and to get thin lines, you put very little pressure on your brush and that's how you can differentiate using the same brush. So we're just gonna paint those little arms onto our um, snowman. You can have one going up, one going down, they can be waving, it's totally up to you. Someone said we should paint masks on the snowman. <laughs> That'd actually be really cute. I would love if you do that, please tag us because I would really like to see. That sounds kind of cute and very timely. It will always be a memory. And everybody, I almost forgot to say um, tagging. So post your painting, tag hashtag plaid crafts mm -hmm. and tag make it with Michael so we can see what everybody made and join our Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group because then we can actually it's super easy for us to see and comment on your paintings and it's just a great community. So be sure to tag with hashtag plaid crafts, hashtag make it with Michaels and check out our Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group. Thanks for I the know, reminder. Say, yeah, of course. I say it every week. My favorite part of paint night is getting on the next morning and seeing all of your paintings that you posted in the group. So make sure you post your paintings in the group because I love to see them. I really do. Uh, okay, so we painted our little arms on them. 
So I still have my um, number five round brush and we're gonna use the same color to paint little eyes and little um, buttons. So it's coal or something maybe um, that our eyes and buttons are made of. So we're just gonna use the same color. So again, just two little eyes. Oops, got too much water in my brush. So I might need to mix a little more. So I don't want much water on my brush because I'm going to be painting tiny little details. Okay, so I'm just going to use the tiny, like the very tip of my brush. And I'm going to paint two little eyes on each of my snowmen. I'm going to paint three little buttons on each. Boop, boop, boop. Just the tiniest little dots on each of my snowmen. And in case you're wondering, um, we haven't really used the yellow or the red yet. The reason that we had those is because I wanted you guys to have some more options for um, the details. So you can see we have these pinks and oranges and yellows for the little accessories for our snowmen. And that's why we have the red and yellow. So just in case you were wondering, we are getting to that. Okay, that being said, I am going to put a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow onto my palette. Just a tiny bit, I don't need much. Any red will do and any yellow will do. And we are gonna mix one part red. I still have the same brush. I still have my number five round. One part red and one part yellow. And I mix just a tiny bit because we are going to try to get a nice orange color for our carrot noses. So our snowmen are gonna have carrots for noses. <laughs> so again, I'm gonna rinse my brush off whenever I mix with Mix with it. I'm gonna get a nice fine tip. That'd be nice sharp tip. And we're going to hold it up close so you guys can see. We're just gonna do little lines, right? Starting between, right below, between the eyes to the right. Just really simple little carrot noses. I think their face is really cute. Oh, they're adorable. Just tiny little noses. And again, any color for the details. So of course you want an orange carrot nose, um, but any color of red, green, yellow, you could totally personalize their little hats and scarves. Yeah, if you got some purple, you got some metallics, whatever you want to use for your snowman at this point is totally up to you. The whole thing is really up to you, of course, but this part especially is really personalizable. So whatever you've got is fine. Okay, so I'm going to hang on to that orange. Um, I'm also going to mix some, I'm going to mix a few little colors here to start showing you guys how to paint those details. I just mixed orange with red and yellow. I'm going to mix some white and red to get some pink. So I have that as another little option for my details. A little bit more white. So I've got an orange here. My palette's really messy tonight. Sorry guys, I'm not being very organized. Um, I've got a, uh, an orange here. I've got my pink here. And then I'm also going to mix some yellow and white to get like just a lighter little yellow. Less bright for this soft snow globe painting. So I'm going to mix some white with some yellow. You got a pale yellow color. Okay. So I've got my orange, like I said, my pink and my yellow. And I'm going to show you guys how I did some of these accessories here. So we're gonna hang on to our detail brush. Um, but we also wanna grab our, that tiny little flat guy here. We also wanna grab our um, number four flat brush. This is a tiny little flat brush. So I'm gonna hang on to my flat brush, my, my number four flat, and I'm gonna show you how I painted those um, earmuffs. So I'm gonna use orange. I'm gonna pick up some orange on my brush and I'm gonna paint little ovals on either side of my snowman's head. So here, I'm trying to hold it, brace myself so you can see it. So a little oval on this side. And then a little oval on this side. Then I got an orange. A little oval on this side. And those are the muff parts. And now we want to make a little headband that connects it. 
So to do that, we are going to switch over to our thinner brush. We're going to switch back to our number five round brush. And we're going to paint the little headband that goes right over the top to connect it. You know, it's tiny. And that's how you paint the little earmuffs. Super simple. Now to paint the scarf, we're going to go back to our little round brush. I mean, sorry, our little flat brush. And I'm going to use pink just to show this, but again, seriously, totally customize it. To paint the scarf, I'm just going to use the wide part of my flat brush and I'm going to go across the neck of my snowman. And then I'm going to go down a little to make it look like my scarf is blowing in the wind. Super simple, really easy to do. And then last but not least, I'm going to show you how to paint that little hat. So I'm going to use, I'm just going to use pink again since I've got it on my brush. All you're going to do is you're going to paint a little line over the top. So I'm using the flat end of my brush. I'm going to paint a line right over the top. And then you're going to drag your brush to the side. That's so, so easy. I love it. So easy. It's so tiny. It doesn't need to be super detailed and you can just fill it in how you like it. Um, so again, you can use any, you know, colors for these. And then you can go back and pick a different color for like the brim of your little, you know, snow hat. So you can go back. I've got yellow here to paint the little brim and just paint a little line across the bottom. And then last but not least, I keep saying this is the final part. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many details on this one. It's hard. They're so cute. Um, you can keep going too, which I love. They all could go all night, but I'm going to stop. Don't worry. Um, we're going to use the end of our brush without the bristles and we're going to put it in white or any color you want. And we're going to put dabs on the end of our hat and on the end of our scarf. And that's going to look like little pom poms, little snow clothes for our little snowmen. Um, so again, Hopefully you, you saw how I painted those. That's just a variety of things that I have on my um, original painting. If you want to go back and paint those details later, like Kira said, this recording will be on michaels.com. Um, so you can go back and customize all of your snowman at a later time at your own pace. Um, but yes, that's it for our little snowman painting. Yeah, thank you guys. Thanks, Jesse. It's so cute. It's a great gift. You could take a stencil and personalize someone's name or the date. Yeah, you can take a little marker and write their names on it, write the individual names. It'd be super cute for a gift or even for your house just to hang up for the holidays. Yep, um, I so love yeah. it. Awesome. We've got going to show week's next week's painting. painting. Yes. So next week's painting is going to be Andy Jones. So he is the content editor here um, for our Let's Paint program. I think it goes this way. Yep. So this is set up <laughs> um, for next week's painting. So this is a really, you can see it's a really beautiful detailed painting. Um, so make sure you tune in because Andy has an entirely different painting style than I do. So you're going to learn a lot from Andy. Um, also something to note about this painting is Andy is going to be using a template. Yeah. So make sure when you go to the event listing to download the template and have it printed out um, and when you come to the class next week. So if you need to borrow a friend's printer or um, you need to, you know, stuff by Kinko's or something if you need to get it printed just make sure you have that template um, next Monday for Andy's class but all of the rest of the supplies will be on the event listing. All right well everybody have a great Thanksgiving have a great rest of the week. Jesse thanks. Thank you Michaels. Yes. And we'll see you guys next Monday. Thanks guys. We'll see ya.